In this video, I'm going to explain the following. I'm going to explain what a horizontal analysis is, and then I'm going to talk about the two purposes from it, and then I'm going to show you how to perform it, and then how to read the results. Let's go. Okay, so let's clear up any misconceptions here. So the definition of a horizontal analysis is that it's a comparison between either an account or a line item on the financial statements. So an account, of course, is different than a line item on the financial statements. An account could be just here platform fees, which is one type of revenue versus a line item will be total revenue on the income statement, right? So a comparison of an account or a line item between periods, so the current period, which is now, for example, I'm comparing March 2024 to February 2024, or uh, comparing the current period to a budget or a forecast, right? So that's the definition um, of what it is, and we'll go through an example here in a second. Uh, now, let's talk about the purposes. Now, the purpose of performing this analysis from my experience working as a controller for the last 18 years or so, there are two main purposes. The first one is an accounting exercise, and the second one is a financial analysis or a business analysis exercise. So from an accounting standpoint, the reason why we perform this analysis is at period end, we go ahead and perform a flux analysis or a fluctuation analysis of the accounts to make sure of the completeness and the accuracy of the accounts. So to show you an example here, if I'm looking at the fluctuation of the account platform fees between March and February, the change is $21,700 or a 22% change month over month. Now, what I do as an accountant is go in and dig into the ledger and make sure I'm comfortable with this change. Uh, because I want to make sure there is no double booking of a single item, for example, or a missed accrual of revenue, right? So doing a fluctuation analysis between a period over the next will give me some kind of comfort that any change is accounted for or I understand it as an accountant and there are no accounting errors or anomalies, right? So in this case here, the change is 22%. I dig into the books and records and I find that we signed up a new customer, Harry Inc., that accounted for $15,000 extra uh, sales or revenue in March. Okay, then I'm comfortable with it and this, this will be my accounting exercise why I would, I would perform a horizontal analysis of the accounts. Okay, so that's the first purpose. The second one would be the financial analysis uh, or the business analysis which is looking at these changes and talking about the drivers, um, the business drivers behind these changes. So when we look at revenue, an increase of 17% month over month, then our business commentary on the change will be something like, you know, either we increase volume of sales or we signed up new clients, um, or maybe it's a favorable mix of the products that we sold. We sold, uh, we sold items with higher prices, or uh, so it could be a combination of all these things or one of them or two of them. So um, the first one is an accounting exercise, which is to find any anomalies or errors to ensure completeness and accuracy. And the second purpose would be a business analysis of the accounts. If you're enjoying my teaching style of accounting and analysis, you're going to want to check out my Controller Academy program, which I'm going to link down below. Now let's go ahead and perform a horizontal analysis from scratch so that we do it together and you get a gist of what I'm trying to do here. So we have the income statement for ABC Enterprise LLC. We have it for three consecutive years, 2021, 22, and 23. And this file here is going to be attached to the description of this video. So you can go ahead and download it and look at how I perform the analysis. You can also re-perform it yourself if you want to dig deeper. So what we're doing here is a horizontal analysis comparing 2023 versus the prior year 2022. And we'll always do a change in terms of dollars here and then we'll do a change in terms of percentage because you'll see a percentage gives you an extra perspective more than just looking at the dollars. Uh, so what we'll do is when we measure the dollars, we always want to begin from the most current period. So equal the most current period or the most recent period minus the previous period and that will give us the change in dollars, right? If you're comparing uh, the most recent period to forecast, you will always begin with the most recent period minus forecast. Uh, then the change in terms of percentage will always be the change in dollars divided by your base year. So the base year is where we began, 2022. Uh, we're comparing that to 2023. We will always want to go back and compare it to the starting point, which is 2022. Or if it's a budget, then the starting point is a budget. You take the change in dollars, dividing that by the starting point. Okay, so that will give us the increase 51%.
Now you look at that increase and you want to dig into it and understand why it increased by 51%. Uh, so you look into it and you might find that we either increase our prices or maybe the volume increased, the volume of sales. We just sold more units. Uh, it also could be that we signed up new clients. Uh, some of it could be due to exchange rate differences if we're selling internationally, right? So you want to dig into all of that and figure out uh, an answer or a business commentary that will address this increase. And you will attribute uh, some of it, you'll say, uh, you know, 20% of the increase is due to an exchange rate, favorable exchange rate differences. 30% uh, of the change will be due to signing up new clients and maybe one or 2% is due to an increase in price. So when I look at this and give it a commentary that will address the business and um, show that you understand the business drivers behind it. Okay, so we can take this and apply it to cost of sales. And when we look at cost of sales, we'll see that it increased by 76% which is not good because now we're seeing the cost of sales went up at a higher pace than um, our sales volume or sales amount, right? So an increase by that uh, higher pace could indicate a couple of different things. Could indicate that your cost of supplies have went up. So maybe your suppliers just increased their prices. It could be that the mix of product that you sold uh, has maybe new items that you created or new uh, products that have maybe higher discounts at the initial period of launch. It could be a number of things. It could be also a uh, unfavorable exchange rates on buying supplies uh, from suppliers that are overseas, right? So you wanna look into this and quantify how much of this is attributable to um, increase in uh, price from supplies, suppliers or exchange rates that is un unfavorable um, or a mix of products, right? So you wanna look at this and analyze it and give a commentary on it. Okay, uh, you can pretty much take the same thing and apply it to gross profit, right? And obviously you'll see the gross profit went up by only 43%, uh, which is less than the increase in sales of 51%. Uh, and that's because your cost of sales is outpacing the growth of your sales, right? Uh, that's why your gross profit is growing at a lower pace than your revenue. Okay, so now that we're done with gross profit, you can apply the same formula across other line items under operating expenses. And if you're finding this video beneficial or entertaining, the way that you can pay me back is that you can go ahead and like this video and share it with someone who would benefit uh, from it. And you'll find here uh, GNA, GNA expenses went up by 8%, which is sort of expected um, because your GNA includes a lot of fixed items in it like rent, um, items like the cost of your uh, GNA team, the team who's in charge of accounting, for example, HR, uh, teams that don't grow as, as fast as sales organization and marketing spend um, because these are more fixed in nature. Um, they will grow, but at a slower pace. So in this case here, it only grew by 8%. So ideally you wanna see this around five, six, seven, eight percent. Uh, if you see this cost increasing by a big amount, 40 or 50%, that becomes a bad sign. You're spending way too much on GNA, which doesn't drive sales necessarily. Okay, now we can apply the same formula here for sales and marketing. And not surprisingly, sales and marketing expenses went up by 56%, which is in line with the increase in sales. So we are spending, our spending in sales and marketing uh, by an extra 56% is yielding an increase in revenue by 51%, which is good. If you find a big mismatch, you're gonna wanna dig into why and explain the difference. So if sales and marketing went up by 100%, uh, then that's not a good sign. You're outpacing your growth in sales, right? So you wanna comment on why. If you apply the same to R&D, R&D went up by 54%, which indicates that the company it continues to invest in research and development. Okay, uh, the same analysis can be applied down for operating income. Operating income went up um, by 116%, and that's mainly because sales went up by 51% while keeping our GNA uh, expense uh, almost flat uh, period over period, uh, yielding an operating income that is higher. Okay, we apply the same formula to our 
um, non-operating expenses. So for entering interest expense, um, it went up by 67%. For interest expense, it's hard to really compare it to our increase in sales uh, because interest expense is only based on the amount of loan that is outstanding. So you'd wanna look at the balance sheet and uh, understand that. So when you look at that in comparison to the balance sheet, the balance sheet is showing long-term debt of $2 million. So you take the interest expense and you say, you know, I wanna divide that by the amount of outstanding long-term debt. And I get 6%. So more or less, I'm paying about 6% um, in interest on the loan that is outstanding, which makes sense. Okay, we apply that to um, income tax expense. And we'll find out our income tax expense went up by a big margin, uh, almost tripling, right? It went up from 29,000, almost 30,000 to 95,000. So the way to look at income tax expense is to try to analyze it in relation to looking at your operating income. So you take your income tax expense and divide it by your income before tax. So that is a 21% rate. And if you compare that to the current year, that went up to 28% uh, ratio between um, our income tax expense uh, and our income before tax. So you see that ratio uh, should be sort of consistent, but again, income tax is a little bit more complicated because it's dependent on nexus and other factors. So uh, it's sort of reasonable that it remains in the same ballpark, um, but uh, you'd wanna question that and figure out why that ratio uh, went up period over period. If you're enjoying my teaching style of accounting and analysis, you're gonna to wanna to check out my Controller Academy program, which I'm gonna link down below. That's it, I hope you enjoyed the video and I'll see you in the next one.